بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اینڈ ٹو ڈے ود دا نیکسٹ پراپرٹی دا تھرڈ دا تھرڈ پراپرٹی ان دا سسٹم دیٹ وی سی از کوزیلٹی سو لیٹ می گیو دی ہیڈنگ کوزیلٹی فائن سو آئی ٹول یو بیسڈ آن کوزیلٹی وی ہیو ٹو ٹائپس آف سسٹمس دا فرسٹ ووڈ بی اے کوزل سسٹم اینڈ دا سیکنڈ would be a non causal system so these are the two types of system based on causality now what does a causal mean what does a non causal mean so i'm telling you in a causal system the output is independent of future inputs so this is the definition whereas in non causal system the output can depend on what on the future input at any instant of time okay if it's a single instant that's also non causal system so i would write at any instant of time point so if i write it like this if i write for the causal system so the input could either be the present value or it could be the past value and similarly for non causal system if i write so the input could be past value it could be present value also and it could have a future value isn't it so now we also have another class based on this causality which is not very important but it is anti causal system and what does anti causal system say the output only depends on the future values on future inputs so these are not practically possible so they are of not greater significance so that's about the definition point causal non causal and the causal now we'll move into some examples so starting off with the examples of the book y of n let's say so we start it off and and you know what present past and future inputs mean right if you not so you watch the introductory video of the systems that is something very important you need to know y of n is equal to x of n minus x of n plus 1 so i told you to check for some values so let's say we check at t equal to 0 so t equal to 0 is my reference point n equal to 0 in this case this is a discrete time so y of 0 is x of 0 minus x of 0 plus 1 so this is plus 1 so we have what we have a future value at this particular input so which means that this system is a non causal system this system is a non causal why because this x of 1 this is your future input right x of t plus 1 y of t is equal to x of t plus 1 so we would check at t equal to 0 again so this is the same case y of 0 would be x of 1 so which means that the present present output depends on the future input so this means that this is a non causal system fine the accumulator accumulator y of n is equal to summation k running from negative infinity to n x of k so have a look if y of 0 you need to find out y of 0 so this would be equal to k till 0 right x of 0 the sum then y of 1 would be x of 1 so it's summing the values 
for the sum it needs to know the previous value and the present value so which means that the accumulator is a causal system right then we have an averaging system the book has a, a formula written for an averaging system and what is the formula so I have written it for myself it's y of n equal to 1 over 2 m plus 1 summation k running from negative m to positive m x of n minus k so this is also a non-causal system the book says non-causal now how is this a non-causal so the book has explained it okay in a, in, in a what in a paragraph so you need to read it yourselves okay and you will understand it you don't have the mathematical mathematical proof over here fine now let's say we have some more examples x of y of n is x of negative n y of n is equal to x of negative n so what do you have is you check for y uh, of 0 let's say y of 0 would be x of 0 that is no man y of 1 a positive value is x of negative 1 so have a look it's the it's the past value if you have y of negative 1 so this is equal to x of positive 1 so which means this is the future value so it's depending on the future value at any instant of time this means that this is a non-causal system so I would write it over here so over there I could write another example this is non-causal right x of 3t y of t is x of 3t so for 0 it would be the same 0 right uh, or if you write, want me to write it so y of 0 would be x of 0 y of 2 is let's say so x of 3 2's r would be 6 if you have y of minus 2 so it would be x of minus 6 so it's depending on the future value it's depending on the past value so this is again a non-causal system non-causal system y of t is equal to y of t is equal to x of 3t for t less than 0 and it's equal to x of t minus 1 for t greater than or equal to 0 so we check it for y of 0 is this one x of 0 minus 1 so this will be negative 1 for positive value y of 1 is equal to this again it will be x of 0 and for a negative value let's say y of negative 1 so this would be the case it would be x of negative 3 so which means that it depends on the future value it depends on the past value and it depends on the past value so it depends on the future value at any instant of time this is a non causal system this one fine similarly you can have what y of t is exponential of no sorry x into exponential of t so if I check it at 0 if I check it at 0 y of 0 is x of exponential of 0 so anything to the power 0 would be 1 so y of 0 is x of 1 which means it's depending on the future so it's a non-causal system again fine now I told you uh, in the previous videos also that it the properties of the system are independent of the coefficient so it's independent of the coefficient also if it has another function in its product so as in the book we have an example y of t is equal to x of t 
into cos of t plus 1. So have a look in this case. This x of t is our input, cos of t plus 1 is some other function multiplied. It is a function of t, but it is not our input. Our input is our input and focus. So we would be focusing on this point is x of t. Because cos of t plus 1 is another function multiplied with it. It is a variable. It is varying with respect to t, but it is not our input. So we check for x of t. So y of t equal x of t. So if we check for y of 0, this is x of 0, y of 1 would be x of 1. Similarly, y of negative 2 would be x of negative 2. So the present output is depending on the present input, not on the future. So which means that this is a causal system. Right? Similarly, uh, if you have an example of this particular case, y of t is equal to sine of t minus 1 into x of t minus 1. So again, have a look. Our input is x of t minus 1. Our concern is not sine of t minus 1. Sine of t minus 1 is a, is varying, is a function of t, but it's not our input. Our input is x of t minus 1. So our focus would be that y of t is x of t minus 1. So you check for y of 0, let's say. So it would be x of minus 1 y of 1 would be x of 0, y of minus 1 would be x of minus 2. Isn't it so? Minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, 0, minus 1, uh, minus 1. So 0 past input, 1 past input, minus 1, minus 2, only past inputs. So it's not depending on the future values, so which means that this system is again a causal system. Fine. Now uh, the most important, the integration. If you have integration that is from uh, uh, y of t is equal to integration from negative infinity to t x of tau d tau. So as I've told you in the previous videos that what happens is that integration is a phenomena that depends on past values. It needs the past values to sum up till the particular point. You know it better than me from your basic differential or basic calculus that integration depends on the previous values to sum it up. So which means that it is independent of the future. So you could say that this is a causal system. But that is not the case. Okay. We do not generalize integration. Do not generalize it. How? Because this could be non-causal as well, as I tell you in the example, but for which I have to remove some portion of the board. Okay, so uh, the question is, let's say, y of t is equal to negative infinity to t plus 1 x of tau data. So whenever you have uh, questions on integration, so how do you solve it? So let me tell you a simple way. You just solve it simply put upper and lower limits just put your upper and lower limits okay so as in this case you have y of t the upper limit is what t plus 1 so you put the function to be in, in place of the independent variable right so the independent variable is tau the upper limit is t plus 1 so you put it as x of t plus 1 so you uh, analyze it over here let's say y of 0 so this is x of 1 y of 1 is x of 2 y of minus 1 is x of 0 
So, uh, and similarly now you put the lower limit also. So y of minus infinity would be equal to x of minus infinity. So the present value depends on the future inputs. Present on the future. Present on the future. Present on the present. So which means that this is a non-causal system now. We generalize it to be causal, but over here we have a non-causal system. Is that fine? Similarly, if you have, let's say we take another example also to, to make our proof confirm. y of t is equal to negative infinity to t x of 3 tau integration with respect to tau. So again, you put your upper and lower limits. So y of t is equal to, uh, you say, x of 3t, right? With respect to tau, I, I put the limit. Fine. So now if you put y of 0, you have x of 0. You put y of positive 2, it's x of positive 6. You put y of negative 2, you have x of negative 6. You put the lower limit, y of negative infinity is x of negative infinity. So what is the case? Present or present, present or future, present or past. So this is a non-causal system again. So what do you do is when you have a question in integration, you can prove it in this particular way. But if you are asked in uh, objective type, so what do you do in that case? If you have the option that we cannot generalize it, so you go for that option. If you have the option for both causal and non-causal, so you go for that. If you don't have the option of non-causal, if you don't have the option of both, if you have only option of causal, so then you go for causal in this particular case. Fine. Differentiation. Now, uh, if you have a function, let's say y of t is the derivative of x of t. So how do you do this? So this is again a phenomena that we cannot generalize. That we cannot generalize. So what do you do? So I will tell you now. Okay. So now you know the derivative is what? The derivative is slope of a straight line. I will tell you that the derivative is what? This is a slope. And slope is what? Slope is for a straight line. And for a straight line, we need what? We need at least two points at least two points for a straight line. So let's say I have a straight line. Let's say, let's say I have a straight line which is this one. This is a straight line. I take two points. Point number one is this at t equal to zero. Find point number two is this at t equal to negative two. And point number 3 is this, let's say, at t equal to positive 2. Fine. Now, to have a line, I need two points, and then we will calculate its slope. So, what do you do is, if I take the points to be 1, to 0 to be my origin, let's say, let's say 0 is what? 0 is reference. If 0 is reference, so what would be the case? 1 and 2, if you take. Point 1 and 2, this would mean what? That you are taking the present and past point. Present plus past point. This would say that the system is causal. But if I take point 1 and 3, if I take point 1 and 3, so now what we would say? It would be the present and the future point. So have a look. This one is saying that the system is causal. And this one is saying that system is non-causal. So what would be the case? So again, if you have a detailed paper, so you can write that we cannot generalize it. But if you have objective, so you would do what? You go to prefer causal. The derivative is 
a causal system. Why? Because the future value is not of practical importance. Because a future value is not of practical importance. Practically, we believe in the past and in the present. So the future value, we don't have that sort of an importance. So we would give it to be a causal system. That's all about today, I believe. That's all about this lecture. Let me check if I have any other point. So, yes, that's all about it. Non-causal, non-causal. So if I have any mistake, you can uh, correct it out for yourself, right? Because you know the basic concept. What is the basic concept? For causal system, the output only depends on the present or the past values. For a non-causal input, what do you have is that output can depend on the future also. So it means that it depends on past, present, future. And for anti-causal, you only have, only have future values. So I remember a point, I believe I have missed it somewhere, that all memory-less systems are causal systems. Yes, I, I remember it now. All memory-less systems are causal. Why? Because they also depend only on the present values. And the cause are also dependent present values and the past. So that's why this is the case. That's all about you. That's all about today. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah, with the property of stability. Till then, take care of yourself and everyone around you. Goodbye.